are they doing who's who's pictures for juniors this? Who? I'm not real sure what. They just said they would be first through third. They didn't say when they were calling what. They did sophomores. I didn't even vote for who's who. Last year. No, no, no. I've got biggest school, most school spirit since the seventh grade. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's pretty. Because me and Maddie Best have gotten it every year. Okay, so we're doing inverse of functions today. So we're still going to be dealing with our exponential and our radical, but we're going to find the inverse of those. And so inverse, what what uh, do you think about when you hear the word inverse? Opposite. And that's exactly right. So opposite is kind of what we're going to be doing. So the first, I mean, the step two here, we've got a two-step process for finding the inverse. Step one, switch the variables. Step two, solve the new equation for y. So you're putting the variables in the opposite spot. And then we'll also talk about opposites when we talk about horizontal line test at the end of the day. But step two, solve the new equation for y. That has like a, b's, and c's under it because sometimes they take more than one step to solve it for y. But we'll switch the variables and then we'll solve the new equation for y. So if I gave you a function that said y equals 3x minus 5, now that's a pretty easy line there. That's the mx plus b form. You could graph that and it slopes three, it's y-intercepts negative five, you know all that. But I want us to find the intercept. So step one, we're gonna switch the variables. So instead of y equals, we're gonna write x equals three. Instead of x, we write y. So there we've done step one, switch the variables. Nothing too difficult on that. Now step two, We've got a new equation that we just created. We've got to solve it for y. So what would our first step be to get the y all by itself? Divide. Not first. Just think of it like normal solving an equation. You get rid of what's been added or subtracted first. So what would we do? Uh-huh. Five is being subtracted, so we're going to add five. Now, we don't know what x plus five is, so we just leave it as x plus five. Okay, we're trying to get the y all by itself. Now, the only thing happening to it is it's being multiplied by three, so we would undo that with what? Divide, we'll divide by three. So there's several ways you can write this answer now. I'm, I like to keep things simple, so I'm just gonna write y equals x plus five over three, okay? So you could put it like that. Now, another thing you could do, if you're dividing that whole top by three, that means you're dividing each term by three. So you might see it like that. That means the same thing, right? Either one of those is fine. Now, the symbol for inverse, I just left the y equals up there, but the actual symbol, do you know what the actual symbol for inverse is? No? It's the negative one power. So this one didn't start off in function notation. It just had y equals. But in a minute when we do one in, in function notation that starts off like that, f of x, the inverse would be f to the negative 1 of x. So if you ever see that negative 1 power, that just means they found the inverse. Okay. So let's do a, let's see what's next. Easy stuff, easy stuff. Page turn. There it is. Alright, so since I talked about function notation, let's do one like that. f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. Is that the same one we just did? Mm -hmm. No, we did plus 5, didn't we? No, we didn't. No, it's not the same one. Oh. So let me go and find a different one. I need the seniors who attend the winners to the high school lobby, please. <laughs> Skip over junior. Yeah, what are they called? Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at this one. F of x is equal to 4x plus 2. And then what I'm going to tell you on this is that the inverse of that is equal to 1 fourth x minus 1 half. That's a minus. My minus and fraction bar ran together. So the directions on this say to verify that that's the inverse. Okay, and I'm telling you that using the notation on it. So here's our function. 
And this means that that's the inverse of it. So we want to verify that. So when you verify something in math, you just prove it. So all we would do is take our f of x function, find, go through the steps of finding the inverse, and show we get what's on the right side. Okay? So on our two steps we wrote down, it said switch the variables, but now it's in function notation. So we might add an understood step. We understand that f of x is the same as y, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to switch the variables. So I'm going to switch those two there and say x equals 4y plus 2. All right, so now we're ready to get the y by itself. So what would we do first here? Yes, sir. Re. So x minus 2 is equal to 4y. Okay, now what? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. So I'm looking at y equals x minus 2 divided by 4. And that, that's not what this says, is it? I mean, I don't have it the same yet. But can I get it there? So I talked to you last on the last one about dividing them both by 4. So let's see what that would look like. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. Okay, so I've got the 1 half, the minus 1 half, right? We okay with that? What about 1 fourth x as opposed to x divided by 4? Is that the same? So here it says 1 fourth x, but I put x divided by 4. Is that the same? Is dividing something by 4 the same as taking 1 fourth of it? Yeah. So we, our work, the answer, would be the process you went through to show that those were the same. You don't get like a, a 7 or anything cool like that. So this next one we're going to look at, we're going to get some powers involved in it, and we're, at, we're going to graph as well. So I'm going to pull a piece of graph paper right quick. So it says find the inverse of that function and graph the function and its inverse. Now, one thing, and I didn't write this down initially, but I see I need to. It says for us in this function to only graph the part where x is greater than or equal to 0. And they can do that. Well, we get into that at the end of the year. That's called a piecewise function. You only show a piece of the graph. We should, remember from the first couple of weeks of school, that this is going to be a parabola, and this is actually the parent function of the parabola. So it's going to be a nice, pretty parabola right there. But if we only show the part where x is greater than or equal to 0, we'll only be showing that side of the curve, right? Because that would be on the right side greater than or equal to 0. So you could, um, let me graph this one first. You could, if you needed to, make it a little input-output table. I got my x's have to be greater than or equal to 0, so I might just do those three. Okay, if I plug those in, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. So there you see that. I'm trying not to draw it a line because we're smart enough to know it's a half of a parabola. Now, we haven't talked about it in here yet, but you did a long, long time ago when you were in Algebra 1. You could do what's called a vertical line test on that to check to make sure it's a function. You just draw a vertical line anywhere through that, and if it touches it more than once, it's not a function. Remember, remember doing that? I can, uh, let me cheat and get a vertical line real fast. Okay, if I move that vertical line across my graph left to right, see how many, okay, see it just touches it once. It's never gonna touch my line more than once, is it? So yes, that would be a function. Okay, now, Keep that in your noggin. Let's go find the inverse of this now. Get me a new color, find the inverse. That means y equals x squared. So step one, switch the variables. So x equals y squared. You want to do y greater than or equal to zero? No, mm -hmm. don't change that yet. 
What would our one step be here to get the y by itself to undo that square? Square root. Uh -huh. So when we square root that, y can be the positive or negative square root of x. Now, this is what Tyler was hinting at and asking about. The only type of x I can have is a positive. Because if there's a negative underneath that radical, it's going to give me an imaginary number, right? So I've got the same boundary that I did on the first part. So x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let me make me a little input output table in red for this. If I plug a zero in, the square root of zero is zero, so they're going to share that point. If I plug a one in, the square root of one is one, so they're going to share that point. Now I don't want to plug a two in. I could, but I don't want to. Why not? Is no, two is not a, see that not a, square root of two is going to get me an ugly number. So I'm going to skip two and I'm going to be a smart number picker and jump on down to four. Because what's the square root of four? Two. So I'm going to go right four and up two. Okay, so now looking at those red dots, you ought to see the curve is curving in the opposite direction as the black one. I mean, we knew the black one would have made a parabola if we graphed the whole thing, so we see that nice pretty curve. But to hit those red dots, it's going to have to curve that way. And what happens when you've got a parabola that the x, it's x equals y squared, it's a sideways parabola. So this would be a sideways parabola like that, but we're only graphing the top half, the part greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, we did on the black graph, we did a vertical line test and said, yeah, that was a function. So we said the inverse means opposite. So now I've got the inverse, so I don't want to do a vertical line test. What type of test would I want to do on my red graph on the, ver on the inverse? Horizontal. A horizontal line test. So a, your normal function gets a vertical line test. Your inverse gets a horizontal line test, so there's my horizontal line. I'm just going to move that up the red graph and see if it ever touches it more than once. Well, I think I'm going to move it up. Come on. There we go. Is it ever going to touch it more than once? Hello? Mm -hmm. No. So we would say that, yes, the inverse is a function. So that's kind of weird to think about a horizontal line test fail. So what type of graph would fail a horizontal line test? A normal, a normal parabola would, yeah. How about a, like a circle? Some, we haven't graphed a circle yet, but we will. A circle would fail it. So anything that has two sides on it like that one would fail. Like that one would fail. x equals 2x cubed plus 1. Alright, so the directions say determine whether the inverse of that function is a function. So that means that we got to do the horizontal line test on it, but before we can do the horizontal line test, we got to find its inverse. So this is basically the same problem as before, they just changed the wording on you. So it says determine whether the inverse of that function would be a function. So we got to find the inverse of that. Then once we get the inverse, I've got the graph paper up there. We'll graph it and do a horizontal line test. Okay? All right, so find the inverse. This would be y equals 2x cubed plus 1. So we're going to step one, switch the variables. x equals 2y cubed plus 1. Now this one's got several steps involved to get the inverse. Let's get the y by itself. So trying to get the y by itself, I've got three different things I'm going to have to do. Which of those do we do first? Subtract one. Okay, that's exactly right. So x minus 1 would equal 2y cubed. Now what would we do second? Uh -huh. Divide by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the order. Y cubed is equal to 
x minus 1 over 2. Okay, so there's only one thing left now. We've got to undo that cube. What undoes a cube? Cube root. So y is the cube root, and this whole thing is underneath it, x minus 1 over 2. So I'm going to need some calculator help on this when I get ready to graph them. Let's, um, do I need to be concerned only with positive numbers like I was on the last one? Can I, can I take a cube root of a negative? Yeah, so I'm not worried about positives or negatives. So there's a couple of things you could do on your calculator here. You see, I've got myself set up to plug in some numbers on the table. You could type that in your y equals like you're going to graph it and go look at the table. You could do that. Or you could plug some numbers in here and work them out. See, I don't know if I plug a 1 in. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. The cube root of 0 is 0. Um, see, I want to get an 8, so I don't think I can. Well, tell me a, somebody tell me another number you want to try. Negative one. Okay. Negative one minus one is negative two. Negative two divided by two is negative one. The cube root of negative one is negative one. Good. Three. Three minus one. You're a good number picker, Tom. Three minus one is two. Two divided by two is one. The cube root of one is one. Okay, so let me plot those and see what kind of idea that gives me. We'll write one up zero. Left one, down one, right three, up one. Now, it's not going to be linear like mine kind of looks like it would be. Um, if we look at the original up there, that's an odd root, so ends would go in different directions. So... What y'all, do you have something on, yeah, about what I was thinking? It's kind of a long, flat-looking snake on Tyler's. I like that. Now, this is hard to tell with the horizontal line test, but if you do the horizontal line test, because it, it looks like on these places where the snake is getting long that, it, that it's flat, but is it honestly, do you, is it really flat there? No. Even though it looks like it on our poor quality screen, this is going to keep getting a little bit lower, isn't it? And this is going to keep getting a little bit higher. So I'm not even going to throw my magic line up there because y'all are going to say, well, it's touching it more than once. But it really doesn't because this really keeps getting a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Okay? And we know enough about the graphs to know that. So that would be a function on that, even though it looks fishy, it would be a function there. All right, so the main idea here, and I'm going to do another one with you before we close it out, but the main idea is to the finding the inverse. Just more practice on working with those powers and solving some equations, because I think, I don't know if it's tomorrow or not, we're about to where we start solving that's all we do is start solving. Let me see if that's tomorrow. No, more graphing tomorrow. So I was getting excited. I like to solve better than graph. All right, let's find the inverse of y equals 10x minus 28. And I'm going to let you try it, and then we'll make sure you got it. All you're going to do is find the inverse. Not worry about the graph or anything.
you did. Fabulous, I'm sure. First step is to switch the variables. X equals 10Y minus 28. Now we just got to solve our new equation for Y. So what's our first step there to solve that for Y? Very good, very good. And I don't know what X plus 28 is. It's just X plus 28. Now you just got one step left. Divide. And depending on multiple choice or not, is how far you, uh, is how you decide if you want to rewrite this. I'm just going to leave it as that. If I'm taking the ACT and that's not a choice, I know that I can put them each individually over 10, and then I could reduce the 28 over 10. That would reduce to 14 fifths, right? I don't like to reduce it like it is because I I can't reduce the whole thing. You know, so if you want to separate it, you could put 1 tenth X plus 14 fifths. But if you want to leave it all together, just stop there. Unless the whole thing can reduce. That makes sense. All right. It's too easy on finding the inverse. Y'all good? Okie dokie, artichokey.